This is Jeremiah, he's back. Jeremiah's back, he's on the attack. We're going to finish chapter 16 of Matthew. We might listen to that chapter again, which I rarely do. Why is that? It's one of the most important chapters in your Bible. Um, it's, you know, that might be arbitrary, but it, it, this, is, this is definitely a very important part. It's, it's where Jesus gives his main boy, his main man, his walking papers. It's just, he gives him his, you know, his authority. And that would be Peter, and interestingly for, for me as a, as a painting fan, my favorite painter is Peter, probably of all time. And you see him a lot here. Uh, Mr. Peter. You might get tired of Peter. I, I, I have, I have a monster here all the time here. Um, just a wonderful painter. He's, he's just a, I call him the painter. And that's what I've based my collection on, my art collection, over the years, as an art instructor who teaches a little art, but it's art appreciation more than anything else. I'm not that much into te technicalities of art or anything like that. I can teach a little bit, I just don't want to. It's, especially at this time, we focus on the Word of God, stand ye fast as men. There you go. There's some scriptures for you men out there. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Equip yourself as men. There you go. Jeremiah, you must be on fire. We love that, Mr. Jesus. Yes, we do. And that's all we think about here basically all the time. That's an interesting painting by Monet there. And a beautiful city picture here. We have lots of pictures and paintings mixed up. I'm going to separate those. Uh, I think I want all pictures on one of these files. I don't want to mix them up anymore. I think this is a, a picture file. And a painting got in there. I, I, I'm not going to mix them up that much anymore so that you viewers will know that the difference between paintings and pictures. Uh, I'm going to stop mixing them up. Jeremiah, you must be on fire loving Jesus. You love that Jesus, huh? You want to be with that Mr. Jesus, huh? You want to worship him right now and praise his holy name and relax and prepare yourself to be in a cloud with Jesus. You love that, Mr. Jesus. And you'll never let him go. Remain in the love of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Let's worship the Lord right now and praise his holy name. Uh, as many of you know, let's talk about the hymns for a moment. I have about 30 hymns up. I, I lost track of my own hymns. I think I have about 29, 29 hymns up or so. And I'm very happy with them. Uh, uh, they were done quickly, because I don't have that much time for music. I'm a Bible teacher. But I decided to give you some quick, you know, um, hymns up there. And they weren't done necessarily very well, but it's good enough for you to get an idea. of uh, Those of you out there who don't have a church, that's basically what I'm here for. I'm kind of here for all those people who are called to Jesus Christ as a supplementary issue um, for a lot of you. Uh, some of you will look at this as your mainstay. Uh, I give you enough here to root and ground you into salvation. Not just to plant you, but also water you thoroughly. And that's why we have this glossary here. For those of you out there who belong to a church where, the, where your Bible pastor is not really doing a very good job, maybe, and uh, we're, not, we're not criticizing anyone, we're just saying that a lot of people don't get what they need where they go. And um, 
And we're here to fill in those spaces, okay? Now, as you know, I, I'm gonna, I have about 1,300 plus videos up now, and um, only a few of them are getting viewed, which are the Christian romance videos. Th those are really getting a lot of hits, but romance doesn't last forever. Medical condition, people die, and car accidents, and unfortunately, all these things happen. And uh, that's life in the real raw. That's 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 life. It's like being one of these soldiers here. This is 1950 something, uh, 55 pictures of our boys over there getting ready to go fight in Korea. Although the ships didn't fight much in Korea. It was a land war. Uh, a, lot, a lot of our boys died over there. And war is hell. So, it, and, uh, eventually we all go down. So there you go. Romance can be wonderful. And we hope that you who are in some sort of uh, marital situation, and we, we hope you have marital bliss, you know. We wish you the best, but the, the bottom line is that this, this Bible teaching ministry, it talks a lot about dealing with hard facts a lot. You know, the problem with going high in the sky is, is that you're gonna come down. So that, that's that's the sadness of, uh, of the world, and, and uh, we're, we're not gonna get to that right now. I just wanted to share with you that uh, we have to face a lot of tough situations. One minute you're riding high in April and you're shot down in May, and we're here to help you who have been shot down, you who have, have, uh, have had uh, wonderful relationships, and they're gone. And there's nothing you can really do about it. You have to move on. Some people out there have been in car accidents and they've lost the ability to lose their leg, use their legs, they're going blind or whatever, and we're here to help all of you out there. Some of you are handicapped. I've had bad feet most of my life. The Lord healed my left foot, and the doctor couldn't believe it. The doctor didn't believe in God who, who took care of my feet. He saw my left foot and he went into shock. Because what happened was the bones were tied together. The um, tarsal carpal, the um, the arpels were tied together. I went in there one day and they were all separated by a couple of millimeters. All the bones. We love that, Mr. Jesus. We praise Jesus for healing. It's just that healings can be something that may not come right away and all of that. So you have to be patient. And we haven't talked about that too much. We did mention earlier, of course, the the situation with the, all these healings in Israel that we just went through with Matthew 1 through 16. Let's listen to Matthew 16 again as we think about loving Jesus and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and kicking back and thinking about being with Jesus Christ forever and cultivating that love of Jesus. Let's listen to a little Love Your Jesus music. See, there's some paintings that snuck in there. I have to clean those out. They, they don't belong in there. Uh, that's okay. They, they, these are a lot of pictures. Let, let, let's listen to I Love You, Jesus, a little more and sit back and relax and think about loving Jesus. We just went through Matthew 1 through 16 now, and I'm going to finish 16. I didn't go through every point, but we're talking about a few points here. We're going to let, the, we're going to let that book go for now, the entire book, uh, any day now. We're going to move on. Let's think about loving Jesus for a couple of moments and just relax it and getting ready to be with Jesus Christ in, in a beautiful place and where there's all love and peace and there is no, there are no um, negative things at all. 
to free your mind of all the things that are bothering you but by the power of the Holy Spirit. To them he gave power. John's Gospel, chapter 1. Another painting that got through here. Wow. That was supposed to be clean. That's okay. We'll clean that later. We want to worship you. There's the Acropolis statue. I think that's Nike. The goddess of power and victory. Well, you know what? While they're, while they're, while they're looking at Nike, we're, li we're living Nike. There you go. It's one thing to think about being in power, but it's another thing to be in power. We want to worship you, our Lord. You need to take time out every hour, two hours, three hours, and so forth, and just stop and think about loving Jesus Christ. That's what you need to do. And think about being with Jesus Christ. He's coming for those who love his appearing. So you, we, we, you need to think about loving his appearing. And that's what we cultivate here, so that you're comfortable with the whole idea of being with Jesus Christ. You're very comfortable, uh, you, so that when you see the Lord, you're not surprised, because you're, you're looking for him. That's one of the main things we teach here, and we foster here. I had a good friend named, last name Foster. Very beautiful lady. But here, here's the point. We, we're here to cultivate that idea. We're here to cultivate the whole idea of uh, getting ready to go, being comfortable. I love that Jesus. Let's go ahead and listen to Matthew 16 one more time. Uh, we're, we're going to get a little, slow down here and get a little disciplined because Matthew 16 deals with a couple of heavy issues. And let's talk about that. It talks about being ready for the gospel. Um, we're, we're, when Matthew 16 starts, begins with the idea that you need to be ready when you have the opportunity and and not being ready and not being open is the kiss of death and it's something that God has decided to do as judge jury and executioner and he's the entire penal system in one person and it's, it's extremely significant uh, it can get a little complicated because you're looking at arrest detain uh, convict and Condemn. And this is horrible. And it's something that God decided to do a long time ago. Uh, your father was already in heaven. He decided a long time ago, you know, that he was going to offer his son and love service, obviously, to the son. And people who don't want to do it are going into fire forever. And it's it, it, you know, it's it's a horrible thing, but you sit back and think about it, it's justice. It's like being called a bastard. You know, it's like being called, you know, someone who is disqualified and is worthless. It's as though you, it's as though you, I don't want to, I want to phrase this. If you don't want love, that's the, one of the key components. Here. Before we get to 16, let, let me share something with you. If you don't want love, God's going to put you in fire. If, if you don't want kindness and love and, and, uh, and, and, and productivity and prosperity and gentleness, if you don't want these things, God's going to put you in fire. And that's how important the decision is 
to choose love and not reject it. It's like when I was growing up, the gang members started coming pop, becoming popular in about 1973 in the United States of America in the cities. And uh, the bigger the city, the more problem it had. But uh, a lot of people just don't know, they don't understand the gravity. They don't understand the, the, the um, the weight of, 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 of punishment that comes to people who do some of the most minor things. And th this is one of the amazing things that we've gotten here from 1 through 16 in the book of Matthew is, is it, let me share this with you, this is like an overarching point that, that I'm going to make a, make a, a a remark here. I'm going to make a commentary on 1 through 16. One of the, the main ideas in 1 through 16 is, is that God has decided that it's just to send people who are evil for eternity in fire. And what I, what I get from this, and by the way, I, you know, I'm reminded of a few things that I forgot over the years in studying this this book here, and, and one of them is is the 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 the, uh, the idea that any kind of pride at all is it's 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 more it's uglier than we thought. Let, 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 let me share it with you right now. I'm going to stop the lesson for a moment and just talk about something that's really overarching that really goes through this, all these chapters, 1 through 16 and, and, and beyond. Is there so much punishment in the Old Testament? I mean, almost a third of that Old Testament is punishment. You know, I don't know how much I, I haven't quantified it, but it's, it, it's quite a bit. The Book of Lamentations, Isaiah, just a lot of punishment. And when I was young, I didn't think about it too much. Now that I've gotten older, I'm beginning to understand why it is the way it is. And the thing is, is that when you don't think about the people that are hurt, that means that you are psychotic. You're, you're, you're living in a world of psychosis when you don't understand the, the pain that you cause. Let's put it that way. Uh, I, I, I've seen pictures of Hitler giggling, you know, and laughing, playing with animals and, and children. But he doesn't really understand what he's doing, does he? Hitler doesn't really know. He, he doesn't really, he's not, he's, not, he's, he's not a cognizant person. You know, people like that, they're basically zombies. And... The amount, of, the amount of pain that this person caused by using their human body and their human brain and their resources to destroy the happiness in a lot of people's lives. The, the, the eternal punishment, some might say, is it goes too far. And I would say, now I know why, more than before. You know, I, as an older gentleman, I've lived, uh, I've watched a lot of movies that are docudramas or even documentaries. And 
And you see the gravity of pain that people cause. Not just one person, we're talking thousands and thousands of people. Then you begin to understand why the situation is so uh, so powerful, so dreadful. I mean, you you look at sin and harm and shame and all of this. You you, you look at things like, I mean, look look, 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 look. Let me give you boots on the ground about punishment. Just just in in terms of what we experience. You know, in my what I experience in my movies and so forth. When you when you look at what's going on here, for example. During World War II, there was a very good depiction as to, there was a very good story in a, in a, uh, in a TV show. I'll go ahead and say the name. I'm not supporting the TV show um, because uh, it was a schizophrenic TV show. That was Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone was uh, quite a um, double-minded presentation. And the thing is, is that the, one of the best episodes, I have all of those episodes, one of those episodes... A German U-boat commander was taken and placed by a, some sort of a, you know, supernatural situation. He was placed on a ship that he was going to blow up. It was a civilian ship. There was no military nothing on the ship. They knew that it was a civilian ship and they decided to bomb the ship. To torpedo it. Now, Rod Serling is a complicated character and we're not going to say anything uh, too negative about him. It's just that he, he, uh, he was a brave man. I'll say that much for him. I know a little bit about the guy. The guy was a very brave dude. I, <laughs> He's, he's braver than I am. But he, he uh, or not, not, not wise, he, one of the two, or both, or something. What made that TV show, that particular episode, so, so, uh, there you're looking at the shape of the dome right there in that picture. It's over your head. That's what makes that shape right there. So, the, the idea that as a TV producer, you go from making one extremely significant biblical point, and the next episode, you tell people that it's okay to promote nightmares and to be afraid. of being murdered or something. He, he would do that. That's why I call him schizophrenic. As a matter of fact, he, he's one of the most schizophrenic authors I've ever read. Usually people write good stories or bad stories. Or, or what we might say, positive stories or negative stories. Right? So they'll pick one or the other. But this particular episode, he really, uh, he became very uh, Christian, biblical, um, um, and, and let, let me explain what happened in, in, in the episode. So what happened was, and I'm giving you an overview of what's happening here in these chapters. One of the th main threads in, in these chapters is, is that the Lord 
he is going to punish people according to what they have done, basically. And some people are going to get this, and some people are going to get that. Now, apparently, the lake of fire is the end of all of these people's their journey. The end of Revelation chapter 20. So that makes it interesting because it appears as though a lot of people are going into the lake of fire. Even minor offenders, but I'm not, I'll let that go for now. Let's just talk about major offenders. And, and, and why, I, why I'm beginning to understand in my older age here why there is such severe punishment for people. And, and, and let, let, let's look at Hitler for a moment. In other words, a lot of people think that people like Hitler are going to heaven or something like that. You know, there's a, there's a rock and roll musician who said that imagine there's no heaven and imagine there's no hell. Stop right there. So if you imagine there's no heaven and there's no hell, there's real de Janeiro there. If you imagine there's no heaven and there's no hell, there's real again, then what are you doing? You're saying that people like Hitler are not going anywhere. They're going to shine on. We're all, we all shine on. All of us shine on? I mean, let's go, let's go to this episode. I'm going to shut down. we got to get to Matthew 16. The idea here is the man was catapulted to the ship he's going to blow up. He's talking with everyone, and they're asking, they're asking him who he is. And he says he doesn't even know who he is. And so they're getting ready to send the bomb, the, the torpedo, and kill everyone. And Rod Serling does a very good job. Um, he, he was a very uh, astute individual, this guy. Unfortunately, he was double-minded, which means he may not even be saved. Double-mindedness reveals a possibility of not being saved. The narrow path means, like, narrow all the time, right? But let, let, let's let that go. So, he, he goes back to the ship. The ship explodes. He goes back to the U-boat. The submarine, which bombed a lot of civilian vessels. People minding their own business, going home, uh, children, women, everybody. They weren't soldiers trying to attack the Germans at all. So here's what happened. Rod Serling did a good job. He showed a lady in fire. She couldn't get out of the fire. He showed a lady, but he didn't do horror movie stuff. He just showed the lady in fire. You could, There are like nine channels on this computer right here, on this software here, this, uh, this, this, this new television. You can watch people burn alive in detail. Like nine channels of that stuff. And every one of those channels is from hell. It's gratuitous violence, and people who watch those channels, they're probably going to hell because you're watching you're watching what God created being destroyed. Because that's what the devil's name means. The devil is called Apollo because he likes to destroy things. He likes to destroy the things that God creates. L look at this new White House here in America. They had a, they had a, 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 a mobile hospital here in Chicago here a couple of weeks ago where you could where you could where you could have an abortion and you could be sterilized. Then the the people who are running for office said that they support buying more weapons 
and bombing Russia and bombing and even giving children and teenagers machine guns and so they might get run over by tanks. And so, so if, if your brain is working 50%, you can see that these people are the devil because they like to destroy everything they get their hands on. Homosexuality can't, can't have children. Sterilization can't have children. Abortion, you, you just killed life. So everything, and, and, and I think they blew up the pipeline, which destroyed all of the fish in the North Sea for, a, a, you can't buy, you can't eat fish anymore if you're in Norway. You, my point is that uh, everything they do is destruction all the time. They, they like destroying nature and blowing up bombs on, on mountaintops and buildings and and NASA calls their spaceship Apollo. Oh, have you read, have you read NASA's uh, bulletins recently? What are they saying in, in their in their memos? That humans should probably be destroyed because they're no good. Well, who wrote that le newsletter? Was it a demon, the devil? Who wrote, who wrote a newsletter that, 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 that humans should be destroyed? NASA said that we should be destroyed? So it's easy to find out who, who, is, who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the master said. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and we know them by their fruits. Whatever they do, we, that's how come we know who you are. Back to the story, as I digress, as they say, uh, or we, we have an interlude, I guess, I guess there are different ways of looking at it. But here's the point. He, Rod Sterling made sure that you saw the lady in the fire, but not details. That, that you can't do that. Uh, in 1960. In 1960 in America, you could not show details of torture, horror, or murder. You couldn't do it. On any channel. Now, you could get some movies that are illegal, but other than that, you, you could not get any any uh, TV show where, there, where, there, where people, people don't have their clothes on in general, and people are being harmed uh, in detail. You know, Dracula was... Uh, was taking uh, taking a picture from t 20 feet away you know you, you, that's that's how America has changed where people are desensitized to violence even even Trump and, and Musk were seen here on the on my computer the other day they were they went to a cage fighting and their conscience didn't bother them that means that musk and Trump are definitely not mature Christians. We can take that to, as they say in America, the Bangola. Neither one of those guys are spiritually mature Christians. Duh. Because you should you you you, you should never go to a place where, where where men are attacking each other, beating each other with blood everywhere in a cage, if your mind is sound. Period. Especially since they're not defending themselves. It's called gratuitous violence. But back to, let, let me close on, on this episode. And, and evidently, or obviously, I'm not, I'm not promoting uh, uh, Twilight Zone. However, he, he made some of the nicest, warmest uh, TV episode shows that have ever been in America. And for that, we're happy. We're happy about that. We Americans. But to go into the dark side, which he ended up calling his next TV show, right? What was that? Dark, uh, uh, dark Shadows or something. Anyway, so the point is, is when the camera went to the lady in the fire, that's what begins to open your eyes. See, 
you, you need to see why things are the way they are. You need to see why justice goes that way. That's why the devil always tries to hide the gravity of sin. He, he likes to do that. In other words, I had a philosophy teacher who said that Hitler's army was a beautiful thing to see. In other words, she's trying to sound, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the professor was trying to sound intellectual based upon the fact that even though these people are murdering people, their uniforms look awfully good, and so on. But, but, the, but, but the professor was not trying to say that the uniforms look beautiful, was she? Uh, was she? No, no. She was trying to say that the uniforms are beautiful and that there's beauty even in these soldiers, period. That's what that professor was trying to say. In other words, the, 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 trying to give us the yin and the yang, you know, that, that, that evil has to be, and so you may as well enjoy it. Those soldiers are, are, are magnificent creatures, just like a, a, a lion eats a lamb, you know, and that's just the way it has to be, man. Enjoy the beauty of everything. Don't, don't uh, blackball, uh, you know, uh, these men, kind of. And th that's what I got from that professor. That means that professor is a very sick person. I had one professor come to class one day, and he put on the on the he put, he put on the board uh, perverse. Then he, he didn't wear he didn't wear a belt, and his pants kept falling down, kind of. Then he tried to say that that word wasn't a bad word. So what are these Democrats in these universities saying? They're saying that. There's no such thing as the word perverse. It's merely an, an, a, an expression of human behavior, and who are you to say that it is wrong? So they're basically anarchists with five-syllable words. And in a way, that's what Rod Serling was, because... When he made these videos, these uh, these shows, whereby people are justified and glorified as murderers or something, then now most of the time he would clean it up, and a couple of times he did a very good job of cleaning up his. His needless exposure of, of evil, you know, we, we're, look, look, let's, let's, hey, let's go look at some evil over here. Well, why are we going over there looking, looking at evil? Well, because it exists. Okay, we, we can go along with that with, to, to a certain extent. And he, he cleaned it up at, uh, on many, many an occasion where he took you to some evil stuff, and then he said, that person is going to hell. And, and, and let's get back to that main that story that I want to talk about because he, he goes all of, all over the place, and I wanted to make mention of how your your world in America for for me as an American, my world brings me the Bible even when I'm out in the world. Rod certainly is out in the world. However, every now and then he'll talk about things that are biblical. And he'll even quote scriptures. So let, let me finish the story here. Um, we're bouncing around, but the idea here is when we see the lady in the fire, you, you don't see details or close-ups, but then the camera goes to the U-boat where the co-star asked the star, what did we just do? They're not even soldiers, and there are men and women on that ship, and I see them being drowning and burned alive. And the captain says, this is war.
And Rod Serling has an epilogue where he mentions a few items at the end of the video, and he basically says, and I should, I would rather quote him rather than paraphrase him, but he basically says that they're going to hell. And that's what the the second mate said on the YouTube, uh, on the U, YouTube, on the U-boat, YouTube, on, on the U-boat. He tells him, what, are we going to pay for this? Or do you know what, do you know what we just did? Those aren't even soldiers. We know it, but it's, we were commanded, it's war. Hitler told us to destroy all civilians on the way out, you know. Hitler told his men when, when they were leaving Paris to destroy everything, bomb people, just go berserk. Because Hitler, Hitler originally stated, and he did it repeatedly, if my memory is correct, he repeatedly stated that he wanted to be a Catholic barbarian because he was Catholic. He attended Mass quite a few times, and he would pray at Mass. There are pictures of him praying in a Catholic church, or synagogue, a better word for it. So, and he's quoted to say that I want to be just like the Catholic army, the Jesuits. I want to be just like the Jesuit army. We have the same protocol. Now, if you've ever read the Jesuit vow, you would know what a Jesuit soldier is commanded to do. Hitler said he wanted to be a barbarian. He wanted to slaughter humans. He didn't say it too much, but he did say it on a few occasions. That he knew that he was slaughtering innocent people and he wanted to do it. But he would tell his people two things, and I'm going to close. He would tell him, tell him that we're, we're taking back our property as Germans, that we shouldn't be low on the totem pole internationally. We should be in charge. We're more intelligent. We listen to Mozart, and they play the drums. Um, we're white-haired and more intelligent, so we should take over. And if we slaughter a lot of people, that's good. Because when we slaughtered them, we proved that they were inferior. That's why Hitler was good with Catholics. That's why Catholics are good friends with Muslims. Because they all have the same book. That's why communists are good friends with Hitler originally. Or were good friends. In other words, you're looking at the eastern part of this mesa, and you have the communists, the Muslims, the Catholics, and then you have the Germans. The Buddhists are basically what we call a non-entity, because they don't preach violence, but they allow a whole lot of it. So the Buddhists and so forth, and you might even go into Japan, but the, whole, the point is, is that the, the, the implements of war are the communists, historically, the Muslims, the Catholics, and the Germans. Now, other countries like our country and, of course, England, they, 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 they have some atrocities internationally and as imperialists, but the point still remains that what we're looking at here is why Rod Serling did a good job. And and most people don't think about those episodes. It, it didn't touch them as viewers. Now for me, as a man who has a, a, a decent conscience, I'm a conscientious person, 
as I got older, I began to see that that episode is extremely significant because those guys burned people alive who are minding their own business. So for them to burn alive is logical. And that also uh, begs the question as to why were these people who did these offenses, why were they set free and they were like Japanese who bombed Pearl Harbor, they weren't arrested. They bombed children and burned them alive. They were allowed to go, go home, those who live, and live in Japan and, uh, and enjoy life. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Doesn't make sense at all. I mean, if you work, if you work at the burn center in, in, in Hawaii, uh, there, and people were brought in, they were half burnt alive and in absolute pain, the, 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 the guy who drove the plane or dropped the bomb He's not going to get away with that. And that's what we teach here. We, we teach the fact that a lot of people don't think about true justice. They, they, they don't, we just read the scripture, he will bring judgment to victory. There you go. See, and that's, what, that's the point I'm making. We just left that, that scripture. He will bring justice to victory. In other words, justice is not being weighed out. When, when, when the laughing Japanese soldier just burnt a room full of children alive and they're in pain and, and he's giggling while he's, he's driving his plane? Uh, uh, no, 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 that's not going to happen. He gets to go home and have suki and sake to drink and live in his pagoda and pray to Buddha and everything's hunky-dory. while he burnt a room full of children alive and he was giggling in his Mitsubishi uh, aircraft. You know, they say the Japanese were laughing when they, when they were flying over. They, you, you could see them laughing. They were so low or something. And, and they were giggling and stuff while they're burning a, a room full of children alive. They're giggling and laughing. And then they're going home and then when the war's over, nobody knows anything about it. You know, that, that could be why the Japanese made the movie uh, Godzilla. I remember the original Godzilla. Uh, they, they had, who was that, Raymond Burr? He was, he was giving some sort of dissertation as to, as to why Godzilla existed. And it was written by the Japanese. Godzilla is here to pay us back for our sins. Because the Japanese knew, uh, deep down in their heart, that they were responsible for murdering a lot of people, and yet they're still wandering around. Their conscience is bothering them. So they erect some sort of, some sort of uh, uh, appeasement, you know, a guilt killer, and, and that's Godzilla. He's, he's going he's gonna to destroy Tokyo, and we paid for our sins. But I'm going to close right now, and we didn't even get into 16. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and close the chapter. There's only two more points to make, uh, or so. I think we're done with 16. But uh, and we're, we were going to listen to 16. We're not going to listen. Um, I want you to read that on your own. As we start cutting back on time, okay? We're going to cut back on time. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure we played that video, um, that chapter earlier. But we might listen to it on the next video, but not right now. I don't, I don't, I don't like videos too long. Jeremiah, um, let's have a few more points and shut down. Speaking of Godzilla, there he is right there. I, 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 take, I take a part of history here. I'm going to start teaching you the Bible through history. Uh, as this ministry goes on, because I know a little bit about history, I'm going to share with you a little bit about how Christianity is tied in with everything. Now, beauty was a big issue, and I decided to put a lot of beautiful images up 
to show you that when you see beauty, you should know that there's a God. It should, if you're, if you're halfway alert, you should come to the conclusion, whoa, there's a God. Let's finish 16. The Lord's going to say that the angels are going to gather humans. And 16 deals with glory at the end of the chapter. And let, let, let's start from the end of the chapter. Glory is the energy of your character. And let, let me give a quick lesson on glory, the word glory. We don't have a, a, an official lesson on that word. I'm going to put glory up on the board. It, it's one of our significant terms. I think I'm going to put that under 12. Um, yeah. Let's talk about glory for a moment. Glory is the effulgence of your behavior. Glory is the expression of your behavior. And I've been meaning to give a lesson on that because we have to we have to give a lesson on the word glory in this ministry because as you know I'm a basics guy. And we we like to spend a lot of time going over the glossary and the dictionary here. Even more than almost anything else, that's what we like to talk about. Because reading your Bible without knowing what the words you're using is a sad situation. Getting into these words and, 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 and getting into the definitions and so forth, Glory is the expression of the energy of your thoughts. It is the effulgence of your character. The reason why the devil is going into darkness is because his character is dark. God's glory is light because he's thinking about love and fairness. That's why he's light. And light will always come from him. Truth and love glow. That's what's going on. When you put truth and love together, that's what makes light. That's what makes energy. And lies and hurt create pain and darkness. Lies and pain, or inflicting pain on people, is going to produce pain and darkness, and pain comes back to you. Since God loves, and loves the truth, that's what comes back to Him. He won't receive anything else. You're going to have to think the same way He does in order for you to hang around Him. In other words, your glory has to be his glory because he decided to be a loving person. That's what he decided to do. And he decided that he was going to be devoted to love and truth. That's what God decided to do a long time ago. He decided that he was going to be love and truth like a choo-choo train. That's why 
He always shines. The human being that decides to be totally devoted to love and truth, they can also now shine. And since they didn't put out any harm, they're not going to get any harm. God never puts out harm. He never wanted to put on any harm. He never devised any harm. The only reason that there's harm is because somebody else decided to harm. God didn't do it. We, we, we just went to John 14, and Jesus said, The devil is coming, and he has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. Nothing. In other words, I don't have anything to do with evil at all. I don't need, I, you know, the only reason I know evil is because the devil is standing right next to me. I don't know anything about it. I don't have nothing in me that's, that he does, the devil. Nothing. That's why Jesus Christ can never be punished, and that's why the Father can never be punished, because all they do is think about love and purity all the time. That's all. They never have one thought about anything harmful or impure or hurting people, lying, cheating. Uh, they never think about it. Never. And the only reason that they, that they see it is because they created beings who could be harmful if they wanted to. But as far as he goes, there's no soap. He, he, he never engages anything. And let's, let's look at the scripture here at the end of 16. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? More specifically, shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, th this is why we're taking a long time in chapter 16, because it's one of the biggest parts of your Bible without... It is absolutely monstrous. We have to stop here as Bible students here. We have to. Because this is where the rubber meets the road. And that's why we went, we went, we went back to Matthew 10. And let's combine those scriptures. If any man love this or that, him or her more than me. Meaning, You've exchanged, see, there you go. You've exchanged your family, your friends, your parties, your ego. You exchanged everything in heaven for something. And the master says, what will? So what, okay, there's a lot of things out there that you can embrace more than him. That's the whole point here. You can embrace something more than him, put him in the third drawer, and you just exchanged your soul. And what did you exchange it for? There's a lot out there. And that's what I'm going to close this chapter on. And, and let, let's talk about number 12 in this ministry, which is light. Number 12 in this ministry is light, and I'm going to go ahead and put glory uh, next to light. I have light and glory, and we're, 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 going, to, we're going to install glory as one of, one of our main terms now for the rest of this ministry, okay? We're, we're going to have to hammer that a little more. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a basics guy here. We, we, you know, I'm a, I'm a Walmart mainstay guy here. And uh, th that's the way we, that's, that, that's how we roll there. And uh, let's, let, let's look at this some more. When Jesus Christ blows up, he's going to the Mount of Transfiguration and he's going to, he's going to shine. He's going to shine so bright 
that, that the boys there, James, Peter, and John, they're going to they're gonna say, whoa, there goes Jesus Christ. I guess he is almighty God. He tells them, don't tell anybody. And then he goes back to being a human. So he's a man. He's being tempted as a man. But he's also revealing there on the Mount of Transfiguration that he's Almighty God, and that's light. That means that everything he thinks about is pure and love and truth all the time. If Every time you look at Jesus Christ, he's always thinking about love and truth. And I want to hammer that home, and we're going to close the chapter here. Because verse 25 goes back to chapter 10. And then we're back to the basic idea of living bread again, which is for whosoever will save his life. So here we go back to saving your life and losing your life, hating your life. We're back to the same overarching principle of living bread, which is you're, you're going to put on a mindset that you're going to hate your life in terms of uh, prioritizing your life as opposed to prioritizing serving Jesus Christ in humiliation. It's the same theme over and over again. Some of you might ask, how do TV preachers, Catholic popes and cardinals, how do they get away with not teaching this? Because it's called mass psychosis, and the devil has blinded them. So that when you mention these things, they ignore them. They go, what did you just say? I just said, uh, Matthew 16, verse... Uh, 25, for whosoever will save his life. There you go. Now, save his life now is equal to loving more than him something else, which is equal to exchanging your soul for something else. It's all the same thing. You got that? The master is quite clear uh, on his grammar here, and this is eighth grade grammar. It's not that difficult. And once again, some of you might say, how do so many people, even in America, 90, 80% of the population, how come they don't understand what you just said? Neither do they articulate that. I'm, I'm 69 years old. I've never heard anyone uh, on the radio, I, I've heard uh, hundreds of sermons in my life. I've never heard anyone articulate what I just told you. And it's eighth grade grammar. Does that mean it's, it's called a psychological falling away? That's exactly what it means where Bible study just so happens to be near mentally retarded 50-70% uh, of the time. Now, did William Penn start this in the Pilgrims? Yes and no. They never presented uh, a very simple 8th grade grammatical standpoint of your Bible. 80% of the people who have been Christians in this world, especially here in America, they've never been B students. Americans are basically C students in their Bible, and we, we hope they're all saved. Um, uh, that's not my point. My point is, is that it's dangerous for you not to get a C and a B in the class. You, need, it, uh, you should get a C and B in this class for comprehension purposes, so that you're happy about being intelligent, which is what the word blessed means, in case you didn't know that. It means eulogia. You're intelligent and you're happy. That's what the technical word for the word blessed means. It means you're intelligent and you're happy. Obviously, it gets into uh, love and, and, and owning love. But the word technically means intellectualism is bliss. Now, since God spoke to you words of love, that makes the word validated on your mind is, 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 is excited and your heart is excited. Your mind is making you very happy and your heart is making you very happy because the Lord is, the Lord is giving you comfort and he's giving you the power of the love juice and that's going to make you happy. That's going to bring you joy. Electric love, that's what it is. But then when you get intellectualism, you're now agape. 
which is the theme of next year, which is the word agape. Now you have the package. You can't have high love without having intelligence, basically. You can't have it. It's mutually dependent and required for you to own intelligence and to own care in your heart. You, that's what it means. When you use the word phileo, that's a different word. Phileo does not demand intellectualism. Agape demands intellect. It's required. You have to know your world more than an animal. A, a, a lot of humans are basically animals. They think very much like an animal. The word Gentile used to mean basically a human being that thought like an animal. The Philistines were considered as Goliath animals. They had no conscience. Uh, David called Goliath uh, basically a heathen. And the word is also used uncircumcised, meaning they don't really understand the world. You, you, you don't murder people with a with a with with a with a, 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 a legitimate conscience. You don't do that. But David is saying he doesn't even he doesn't understand that. Goliath doesn't understand that when you murder people, it's bad. And the people don't want you to murder them, and you're hurting them, and their family's going to be hurt, and God's not going to like it. You don't think about that at all. When you are an animal, uh, I used to talk to gang members in my neighborhood. They, they didn't show up until about 1973. Uh, gang members started growing like, like, like weeds in the community. You would talk to them, and they'd go, yeah, I, I beat that woman up, man. I knocked her teeth out. <laughs> you know, I, I, I encountered guys talking like that. Yeah, I, I just knocked my wife's teeth out. You know, that's right. They're basically animals. Now they they are humans, but but they are living on a level of an animal. No care for people, uh, no mercy, uh, you know. Merciless or ruthless. The Hebrew word is Ruth. R-U-T-H. That's care for people in general. When you know they're just people. They're not perfect, but you still care for them. That's what the word Ruth means. You know that Billy doesn't deserve uh, to be safe, but you want him to be safe. And who's the king of all of that? Jesus Christ. I want to shut 16 down. We're going to 17. There, there's some more points I can make here. Peter, Peter gets the keys of heaven, and that's pretty simple, but we'll, we'll skip that where he gets the keys where whoever comes to him and receives the kingdom as a little child, which goes back to one of the main points in, in, in this book here, in, in, in all the Gospels, of course, repeated, that except you receive the kingdom as a little child. Some people want to receive the kingdom based upon their criteria. That's, that, that's the last point here. Some people want to come to church and they, and they set up their own criteria. I can be proud. I can be rich. I can slap my wife around, or, or she can slap me around, or uh, and she's saved too, and we're all saved. And let, Let's come up with our own criteria here for salvation. And the master says, no, 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 no. You're going to have to receive the kingdom as a little child. Otherwise, you won't get it. That goes back to go find those in chapter 10 who are worthy of the gospel. Meaning, you're not worthy of the gospel. You're not worthy of God's love unless you're open to be a loving person. If you're not open to be a person who, who embraces the truth and science, then you're not going to get the kingdom. 
based upon certain behaviors related to pride, greed, sensuality, violence, etc. That's the point. That's a powerful scripture there. Except you receive the kingdom as a little child, the, the TV preachers, the popes, the cardinals, the, 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 the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they're trying to receive God uh, under the pretense that they can be violent and stone women to death. Who are caught in adultery. You can't receive the kingdom being ruthless. You're not going to get the kingdom. We just read the master said, I would have mercy. That's God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, I want care from you, sir. Otherwise, you'll never, you'll never fit the qualifications here. Go and learn what that means. I, I don't really want you to tell me that you didn't go, that you didn't eat Sunday morning, and so forth. I'd rather have you tell me that you cared for your neighbor. As opposed to telling me, I, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't eat on Saturday, and we don't do this on Saturday, doggone it. But when my neighbor showed up, I knocked him out. Oh, I, I, I paid tithes at the church, but I robbed the widow's home. It would have been better for you to show compassion for the woman than for you to pay the tithes. You're straying in that, and you're swallowing a camel. That's what you're doing. The, the, the real important things, you're, you're not paying attention to. Paying tithes is critical, or not tithes, but sharing your, your, your uh, wealth and your energies to the church. It, it, but you better know it's critical, but it's not as critical as you being kind to people. I would rather have you be caring than for you to keep telling me about stuff that you did over there. I did this over there. I, I went over there. I did that. God owes me 15%. They have it on TV here, on these TV programs, this, this TV preacher bozo stuff. Uh, they're not all bozos, but a lot of them are. And they would come on the TV and they go, uh, I gave 10%, God owes me 30 You know, if you give 30%, not only will you be healed, but you'll get a husband. Same thing the Catholics teach. Same thing the Mormons teach. Same thing all of these cults teach. TV preacher is basically a cult, a C-U-L-T, where you earn stuff from God. That's why they don't like Protestants. The devil likes to go after Protestants, and the Lord lets him come after us. It's a testimony of the love of Jesus Christ and the love of the truth, where I'm not going to back down from the truth. I'm not going to say that evil's good. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that we can make Jesus Christ suffer at Mass, which is basically cannibalism. I, I, I don't like that. That sounds very sick. And you're sick, Mr. Catholic, for demanding that we see your wafer as a living uh, torture of the Lord Jesus Christ a couple thousand times a week for these uh, Catholics. That's part of Catholicism, where you're actually making Jesus Christ suffer. You're doing it. In real time, by the way, it's called transubstantiation. They demand that you, that you see yourself torturing Jesus Christ. He didn't die once for all, to lay on the Greek. He dies all the time, and he's suffering, and we're making him suffer. That's the devil, isn't it? And Jesus Christ has already died, and he's risen to, uh, at the right hand of the Father. That's why they never show you pictures of Jesus Christ sitting at, 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 at the right hand of, Jesus, at the, of the Father, because they don't see him at the right hand of the Father. That's the point. A lot, of you didn't, a lot of you don't know that. I'm not going to go into a Catholic lesson. I'm going to shut down, but that's what they teach. That's why if you see a Catholic Jesus Christ suffering movie at the cross, they'll never show you him rising and going and sitting next to the Father. They think that he never got off the cross. I went to a Catholic church. I thought, 
Well, that's an awfully big uh, image of Jesus Christ on a cross. And then I started putting two and two together. What they teach here is, is that he never got off the cross. That's what makes these people insidious. They're very sick people. They're saying he never got off. When you have mass, you're making him suffer again. You're doing it. You're crushing him. I think that's what the word mass means. You're destroying him and, and causing him pain. And now you can get something from God or from Mary. And it also ties in with you making Christians suffer who are Protestants. Now you're, not only are you going to make the master suffer horribly, you're going to make the people who follow him suffer, which are Protestants. His own family, you're going to crush him and you're going to crush his family. So get out there, you Catholics, and make him suffer right now. Go. Not only him, but make the people he loves suffer. So Jesus Christ allowed himself to be to suffer from these, these devils, which are basically like Catholic, Pharisee, Roman soldiers, whoever, and he's going to let you suffer uh, by these people. Because their goal, if you're paying attention, is, is for the Christ to suffer, cause him pain, and, and don't do what he says, and make him angry, and, and do the same thing to his true followers, both of them. And the Bible says that power was given to the beast. So power is given to them for them to have authority over you. And we'll, we'll close with Paul saying, all day long we are considered as sheep for the slaughter. Okay, that's an Old Testament quote, New Testament quote. Meaning all day long we are considered possibly uh, items of torture, which is the word martyr. All day long. There you go. And he lets them do it. And when you when, on his on his day, let's talk about his day for a moment. On his day, and his day is coming. And his day is basically Armageddon Day, if if my chronology is correct. But on Armageddon Day, which is his day. Uh, which is the marriage supper, and we get to eat up the enemy with the Lord Jesus Christ on white horses coming back with him. Uh, we just looked at those scriptures and those references, and that's basically his day. When he See, the master is saying that his day is when he wraps evil up. In other words, we, we just had a, uh, our day in America where it looks as though America is going to be, be much better off uh, for a couple of years with better supervision. And Amer Americans uh, woke up to the fact that they might need better supervision. So that's our day. The Lord is saying that's basically not his day. His day is when everything gets wrapped up. Woo! His day is when all evil stops. Period. Then also on his day, when he stops all evil, that's also judgment day. That's the day when he's going to assess people's behavior. And, and, he, and he let people have enough rope to bury themselves. He let the Catholics, the Jesuits, the, the Hitlers, the Muslims, the, 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 the Genghis Khans of this world, and, and, and Stalin, and, and, and Mao Zedong, and all the evil people in history, uh, he, you know, and, uh, all the evil people, you know, uh, Ahab and, and all the evil people. He let them do that, and now it's time for them to, to be assessed. And the people who were tortured by these people, they have a testimony that they love Jesus Christ. They love God. They love the truth. They're going to stand up for the truth. They're not going to bow down to filth and trash as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, right? 
They, they told the king, uh, we don't know if God's going to save us from your fire, but we're not going to bow down and worship your scummy little uh, uh, rap artist, whatever you got there, uh, um, image, you know, listening to rap music or something, boom, boom, or whatever. They, who knows what they were listening to? It could be country western. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's trashy music, and they're singing out a key, and we're not going to bow down to your creature there. You go ahead and bow down. We have no other gods, number one on that list there, no other gods besides God. So if, you, if, you, if you're looking for us to make you your God, forget about it. It ain't going to happen. We're devoted to our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll bow down to him in a heartbeat. But you, uh -uh. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are a microcosm for the tribulation period where a lot of people are going to be forced to to bow down and kneel down to the devil in order for them to eat and survive. If they don't do it, they'll probably face the guillotine, the famous French revolutionary weapon. So, uh, unfortunately, Marie Antoinette and so forth, or uh, forgot her name there, there was also another lady there, but, uh, well, I'm getting my, my history mixed up here. I'm, I'm thinking about too much at one time. Jeremiah, you're going to shut down? That's it. Uh, we're going to go to 17, and that's it. It's a Monday here, uh, the 25th of um, November. November. I think that means new fire, right? November. New energy. And, and we'll take that new energy. Jeremiah, you go through the Bible quite a bit, huh? Listen, we're not messing around here. We are, we're, we're going to get a C in this class. We're not bragging. It's just that, you know, a, a lot of Christian people are going to get going to get a D and obviously be saved and so forth. They're not, they're not going to study that much. I, we're, we're not here to say that people who are feeble, you know, and, and who don't study that much are going to hell and they're not saved. That's not, that's not for us to ascertain. But we do know that we, we definitely want to be very diligent students here. Now, many of you don't have the time I do, obviously, um, out there in the world, but uh, uh, I have lots of time, and I'm going to use my time to listen to the music of I Love You, Jesus. Let's close with that as we think about loving Jesus here. And that's all we really want to think about here. Get this Bible study going and, and put it all in your head and, uh, and enjoy it. You know, enjoy this Bible study. This is loving Jesus, getting into the truth, right? The truth is love. When you put love and truth together, that's where you find God. If you think you can have emotion for love without truth, you'll never see God. Because that's not love. Love demands intelligence. What, I say this all the time. My parents taught me that love and intelligence are mutually dependent. You can't say you care about people and you don't plan and think. No. Planning, preparation, thinking are required for real love. You can have affection and do all kinds of things. You can have affection for people, which we might call phileo, and hurt them the next day. And that might be legitimate phileo. Now, there's different kinds of phileo in Greek. Uh, there's actually phileo phileo or something. That's an interesting term. Uh, we'll let that go. We love Mr. Jesus. I'm going to shut down for the day myself. Uh, for those of you out there, I'm just going to shut down. And we're going to get some study for the rest of the day. But we won't get into my personal stuff here. But I'm going to shut down and, as we think about loving Jesus. 
with all our heart and soul. We love Mr. Jesus, and that's all we think about here, basically, is my life is Jesus, my whole life, my whole everything. Uh, we just looked at that beautiful scripture, uh, thou savorest not the things of God. We savor the things of God. We savor love, truth, denial, uh, the benefit for others, uh, uh, who for the joy set before him and the joy set before you. The joy set before you is the ability to enjoy helping people. And you're devoting yourself to helping people in the church and, and, what, and what you get out of it. You're very sensitive to having a, 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 a profound derivation from helping people. You're cultivating that. Which is the essence of Jesus Christ. That is the effulgence of Jesus Christ. He's always thinking about helping people, but he demands certain things. If you think you can embrace a lie and beat up your wife, and, and get God's love by going to church or something, you'll never get it. Because you're living a lie. There, there are requirements for getting this love forever. You need to embrace the truth and embrace the characteristics. That's why, that's why the first thing the Master taught in this book, we're, we're up to 16 now, in this book of Matthew was the characteristics of a loving person. That's the first thing he taught. <clears throat> The first thing he taught was the characteristics of a real loving person. What are the characteristics? What should I see out of you? Well, one of them is you're going to be meek. You're going to have self-control. Self-control obviously means that you're going to you're going to have the power to have to have self-control, but you're going to have to yield and open yourself to that behavior. You're going to have to you're going to, have to concentrate. You're going to have to think about that behavior. When you get angry, we just looked at the Book of Psalms. No wrath, no anger. You don't cultivate anger. You don't. You, you, you're supposed to resist it and use your will and the power of the Holy Spirit to control yourself. And if you don't do that, you're not going to be blessed. You will not go to heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You will not inherit the earth. The Master gives you the attitude first. Then he gives you the commandments. To love me. So obviously, controlling yourself is loving him. Wanting to control yourself, wanting to make peace, that is loving God. Do you remember shut down? Maranatha means the Lord is coming. Shalom means peace. That means we're going to stop all aggravations. Or ag the word is altercations, right? Amen. 